Hey, Deneen, it's Clint Novak within the loop. How are you doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing just fabulous. Great. Uh, I, we are live on In the Loop here and uh, want to chat a little bit about 2014 for Canada's Wonderland. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for having us. No problem. Um, now, hold on. I'm I, I was so prepared with the phone call itself, then I forgot to pull up the question. So. <laughs> Um, no we've got the legend here, also Drew the intern, and uh, why don't we go ahead and start firing away? We don't have too much time. We're cutting it a little close here, so uh, Drew? Um, I just want to double check that the list of questions uh, we have on the Facebook page, those are the ones that I'm supposed to ask, correct? Uh, I think it's the one in the In The Loop stories. Let's go to legend. Legend, go ahead and start. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to start off. Now, Deneen, the Cedar Fair Company, they haven't built a dark ride in as long as I can remember. What was the decision to go that way with uh, the new Guardians of Wonder Mountain? Um, I think it's just something new and exciting and different for the company. Um, you know, obviously Cedar Fair has been great um, to Canada's Wonderland um, since the, since taking us over in, in 2006 with the additions of Behemoth and Leviathan, and of course, things like Windseeker and, um, and Planet Snoopy. So um, this is just something, again, that's kind of moving us in a different direction, and we're really excited about it. Oh, I know. We're excited. Um, what will the story of the attraction be, and how will it be set up for guests? Um, I think we're really sort of looking to build the mystique of Wonder Mountain. Um, I don't know if you guys were ever at the park um, in its earlier days, but um, folks actually used to be able to access the mountain by a series of, we guess, sort of call them goat paths, if you will. Um, but it was actually a, an attraction where you could walk up the mountain and you could look out over different parts. And with the addition of various rides like Vortex and Thunder Run because of the mechanics and the inner workings of those and them operating in and on the mountain, we weren't able to allow guests on the structure anymore. So um, a ride like this is exciting for us because um, we're able to take people inside the mountain, which is not a lot of people have been in the mountain or on the mountain or seen it. And I think there's you know a lot of mystique with it and people are sort of excited about the story and seeing inside of it. How long have you guys been uh, interested in building something that would go inside the mountain? I mean, again, I think it's it's the kind of structure where people sort of look at it and they're like, could they put something in there? And um, I think the most common question we've had since the announcement is, was well, is Thunder Run going to go away or is you know Vortex going to shut down? And I don't think people realize how much space is actually inside that structure. So um, I think we've been looking at it seriously for the last few years, but um, you know, it's, it's always been there. It's always been something that's been of interest. All right, now I got a question about the, the ride itself. Now, in, in the press releases and things like that, you guys said it will have a coaster track and a drop. So, of course, our, our lovely nerdtastic audience would want to know, will Canada's <laughs> Wonderland be counting this as a roller coaster? Um, right now, I think what we're sort of saying, and we're, we're waiting until the ride is built, but um, we would definitely say it would be classified more in the coaster genre than the flat ride. Um, but we'll have to wait and see in, until it opens, and we'll sort of, I guess, make the final call on that. <laughs> Absolutely. And could you talk a little bit more about the climb and drop of the ride? Is it going to be outside of the mountain and inside of the mountain, or is it all going to be inside the mountain? No, um, the riders will actually climb up the outside the mountain, so um, the station will be located inside, um, and the initial climb will go up the outside of the mountain, and then um, you'll sort of drop back into the mountain, and, and the journey will go fairly, uh, mostly on the inside from that point. All righty. Now, uh, I guess there's there's a lot of intrigue in this ride, I guess sort of because of the, all the mystery of it, where, I mean, if you announce something like a behemoth or a leviathan, everyone kind of knows what they're getting. Is there there any park in the world that you would say the Wonder Mountains Guardian would kind of closest resemble? Um, the ride is unique. It's it's definitely different than, I think, other things that folks have been on. So I think it's hard to sort of compare it to other rides. We're excited about it because of the technology, working with the Canadian company Triotech. Um, we're really excited about the technology side of it and also, you know, just the ride development, working with Art Engineering, who's developing and designing the track and the cars and, um, you know, all the hardware that go along with it. So I think it's hard to compare it to anything else at this point. All right. Now, uh, a question about that one. It, they've had a lot of experience designing rides and attractions, but never something sort of on this scale and level. Why was the decision to go involved with uh, Triotech in this project? 
Um, again, Triotech is it's a Canadian company, which we're excited about, also being a Canadian park. So um, it's exciting for us to obviously work with, with them on, on that level. But, um, y- you know, they're definitely cutting edge, and they've got great technology behind them. And uh, we think that they would be a great partner on this project. And I know they're just as excited about um, developing, you know, the world's longest video wall as we are as, as having it and having it as a part of the ride. All right. I got, I got a couple more quick questions for you on sure. the topic of uh, Guardians of Wonder Mountain. Um, will it be on the Fast Lane program? Uh, you know what? I don't know at this point in time. So that'll be something uh, that'll probably be looked at um, closer to the 2014 season. Gotcha. Is there any idea of what kind of capacity or alley capacity this ride will have? Off the top of my head, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, but again, I think those are the details that we'll have a better a better handle on um, once the structure is in place and we start testing the ride closer into the, the next season. All right. And the, the last one on the topic was, is there a, a ballpark figure of the approximate cost of this project? Uh, the project is approximately $10 million for the install. Oh, wow. wow. All right. Well, I think that, that was all the questions we had on the list according to the for the new attraction, I don't know if Clint, you had anything else on there. Um, no, I, I didn't. Uh, nope. All right. Now, now we can't let you go without talking a little bit about Halloween Haunt coming up real sure. soon for you guys. What kind yeah, of uh, what is. kind of We're new excited. stuff's coming to the park this year? Um, well, we've got some great new mazes. We've got Sci-Fi House, which is a brand new maze, and of course, we've got. Um, the ruins um, and uh, Louisiana Scream and the exciting part about those two mazes in addition to sort of being new and one being a reworked idea um, is that those will actually be located inside the mountain as well so we've got lots of construction projects happening inside Wonder Mountain at this time Alrighty and um, another thing we wanted to touch on briefly was that you guys made a lot of improvements to your Starlight Spectacular show um, how has the show been received this year? Because in the past, it's very different. If I know a lot of our listeners hear Starlight Spectacular and they think of like the kind of the Snoopy Christmas lights show we see at a lot of the Cedar Fair parks, but yours is very, very different. It is, yeah. Um, our team was sort of given the idea and the concept a couple of years ago, um, and uh, I think we sort of took a look at what the existing projects were and thought, you know, how can we do this differently? And um, we have an incredible production team who works in tech and event services, and they were really the creative minds that behind it that really pushed it to what it is. And, um, you know, we introduced it back in 2011, and it was a phenomenal show. The projection was um, being the 3D mapping on the mountain. That was something people had never seen before. And then, uh, you know, to be able to overall overhaul our fountain um, with LED lighting. That was the first sort of update I guess our fountain had had in many years. And then this year, um, it got a huge overhaul with the fountain and really getting that dancing water feels. And it's been received very, very well. It's an incredible show, and it's just it's a really great way to end the night at the park. Very cool. Now, with Halloween coming up, is there any chance we're going to get a Halloween version? Um, I don't know if there's plans, actually, to do a, a Starlight, but I know one of our other popular shows, which is Cirque on Beyonce, um, it's been so popular that we'll actually be bringing back sort of a Halloween-themed version of that. Uh, it's called The Underworld. We had that last year, and we're excited to present that again this year. And if you did see the show last year, I believe there will be some changes to it this year, so it still will be sort of a brand-new show for folks. Very cool. Actually, our, our buddy Josh, who runs the, the CW fan site, wanted to chime in and say, asking if Cirque Ambiante, which is, I'm happy you said that first, because I would have had no idea how to pronounce that, if that's going to make <laughs> a return for next year. You know what? The show has been fantastically received for the first two years. Um, we consistently see comments on Facebook and social media and just from guests at guest services about, you know, this is the best show I've ever seen in a theme park. And, um, you know, I don't know if the show will be back in the form that it is, um, but I'm sure we'll be seeing something very exciting um, next year in that sort of a theme. Well, we know with a, uh, a new attraction that leads uh, guests traveling from the United States up to Canada, um, is there anything a, a U.S. citizen will need to know about this? I know me, when I traveled to uh, Canada's Wonderland, I didn't think about my whole cell phone not working. So once I crossed the border, I had no direction whatsoever on how to get there and had to oh, stop at a hotel to print out MapQuest directions. Is there any other tit- tidbits uh, that uh, someone would like to know? Um, you know, I think, like you said, it. I think the biggest thing, and we experience the same thing when we travel down to the states. Unfortunately, I think is, you know, it's we're all sort of dependent on our smartphones, and when we lose them, it, it's kind of hard to keep operating. But, um, you know, definitely, yeah, planning your visit ahead of time is a great idea. Whether it's you know printing out directions or um, installing our app, we have a great app that folks, um, of course, all the Cedar Fair, uh, Cedar, 
Yeah, sorry, Cedar Fair Parks have um, that you can certainly download. And then, of course, we've got um, we've got great plan of visit tools on our website as well. Everything from you know if you have special dietary needs to um, park maps, all sorts of great things. All righty. Now, now I've just got one question to sort of wrap things up here. I don't know if Clint had anything else before we let you go. Uh, I'm good. All right. Now. M- my last question was, you know, a lot of people listen to the show, but they've never been to Canada's Wonderland, partially because, you know, it might be in another country or it's not close to them. How would you describe Canada's Wonderland to a guest that has never been there before, but has been to other parks? Oh, see, this is a tough one for me because this is my home park. This is where I grew up. So um, I think people don't, I, I think a lot of people don't realize the beauty that Canada's Wonderland has. It's, um, the landscaping is incredible here and it's just, it's a beautiful park. We've got a, you know, world-class selection of rides and roller coasters, but it's incredibly scenic. And I think it's just, it's a beautiful park. And if you are traveling up here, I would definitely recommend taking more than one day to see the park because there is so much to do between, you know, 16 roller coasters and the rest of our great flat rides plus you know, two great children's areas and splash work. So there's a lot to see and do in, in a day and definitely it, it's a multi-day park, we think. All right. Well, that, that, that wraps it up pretty well. I, w- I want to thank you for coming on the show. I know we, a lot of our, our listeners out there are excited for the new ride coming next year and uh, I want to thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having us and we're really looking forward to 2014 as well. All right, that's uh, Deneen from uh, Canada's Wonderland and their new attraction for next year, Wonder Mountain Guardian. And I think that 